Immunology basically studies the immune system of an organism and how it protects it from physical, chemical and biological invasions. Immunology is a confusing subject in science. It is confusing because for the first time, or once you read more deeply into the subject, you found out something like um, cell 1 will activate cell 2, which then cell 2 will activate cell 3 and cell 4. Cell 4 then reactivates cell 2 to activate cell 5, which then inhibits cell 3, which then inhibits cell 1 and cell 4. So it's pretty much confusing. But the good thing is, there is a step-by-step -step process into learning immunology. So, the immune system basically studies how a pathogen, such as a bacteria or a virus, invades a living organism, such as a person's body, and how the body reacts to it. Now, the human body contains specialized organs or structures which work together with other parts of the body to control and destroy these pathogens. Now, these special organs are the thymus, lymph node, spleen, and bone marrow, where special immune cells are produced or matures in. They are all connected in some way and are referred to as the organs of the lymphatic system. So basically, the body's immune cells coming from these various organs, such as the thymus and bone marrow, will try to destroy the pathogen. But you might ask yourself, but doesn't the body contain good bacteria? good pathogens? Isn't the body full of bacteria even? Does that mean that the body constantly attacks itself? Well, it's interesting to note that the human body does contain more bacteria than cells in a given area anywhere. So how does the body live with these bacteria? Well, it turns out that the bacteria don't get enough credit, and whenever the word bacteria is heard, it always refers to something bad. But the human body needs bacteria to live, such as bacteria in the gastrointestinal tract which is vital when we consume food. So from all this, we can say that there is a good bacteria and there is bad bacteria, or even better yet, self and non-self. And the body recognizes its own pathogens, itself. So for example, if we have one of those immune cells which we discussed, um, such as a phagocyte, and it comes along a non-self bacteria or pathogen, a bad bac pathogen, it will consume it and eliminate it without hesitation. However, if, it, if a phagocyte comes along a self bacteria, its own, it can distinguish it from a foreign bacteria and so let it pass without harm. And this is why you hear unsuccessful organ transplants, because the new organ is a foreign substance. It is a non-self substance. And so a non-self substance will initiate an, an immune response triggering an attack on that new foreign organ. Now the body can also attack, attack itself. When this happens, it is called an autoimmune disease, when the immune system is out of whack and its own immune cells begin acting as though the body's or own organs are foreign or non-self substance. You might have heard an autoimmune disease affecting joints, such as rheumatoid arthritis, or RA, and one affecting the spine, called ankylosing spondylitis, or AS. Now the immune system actually can be divided into many parts, which we will look into in more detail now. Now the immune system can be divided into the innate immunity and the adaptive immunity. The innate immunity is a quick response towards a pathogen and is the first line of defense. The adaptive immunity is a delayed response and is an antigen specific, specific response. It is a second line of defense. Now the innate immune system has key players within it, which are mainly macrophages, dendritic cells, phagocytes basically, uh, mast cells and other granulocytes, complementary proteins, which help destroy a pathogen, and chemical mediators, such as infl inflammatory mediators. Now these cells and substances are connected with T cells, which then initiates the adaptive immune system. The cells of the adaptive immune system are the B cells, which secrete antibodies, and the T cells. Now the T cells then can differentiate into T cells killer cells and T helper cells. 
but all these cells are co actually connected in some way. So let's look quickly at um, this antibody and what it means. So antibodies are these Y-shaped looking things which are able to bind to antigens on, on different pathogens. When these antibodies are successfully produced and are able to bind to these pathogens, the immune cells, such as the phagocytes, can then easily eliminate the pathogen. Because the main players of the adaptive immune system are the B and T cells, the adaptive immunity can be di further divided using each cell. So again, the immune system can be divided into the innate and adaptive. The adaptive immunity can be further divided into the humoral and self-mediated immunity. Where the B cells are the main players of the humoral immunity, and the T cells are the main players of the self-mediated immunity. But essentially, at the end of the day, the T and B cells have to work together to destroy the pathogen. Well, actually, the T, uh, actually the cells of the innate immunity, such as the phagocytes and the and antigen-presenting cells, also have to work together with the adaptive immunity, and we will see shortly how. So, when a pathogen decides to invade a body and goes from the outside to the inside, the innate immunity kicks in. And so basically, first, we can say that the phagocytes will try to consume and destroy the pathogen. Alternatively, it can't. And so the adaptive immunity kicks in and the antigen presenting cells such as the macrophage or dendritic cells from the innate immunity will present the antigens of the pathogen to T cells in the adaptive immunity. Now this might sound all complex but further on further videos will explain it in more detail. The T cells will then be able to uh, differentiate into T T killer cells, which will then destroy the pathogen, or it can uh, differentiate into the T helper cells, which will in turn activate B cells to secrete antibodies, which will also help destroy the pathogen. Now, a very important concept is that the human body can create memory from the first exposure of a certain disease or what not. So for example, if someone got exposed to flu, it, um, it might take some time to recover, but the second time they get that flu again, they will recover much more quicker. And this is due to the memory cells. And so the next time, yeah, and so the next time it happens, the body will recognize it and be able to eliminate the pathogen and restore the body much faster. Now these memory cells come from the adaptive immunity. So let's see how it works just uh, briefly. So let's just say we have a first exposure to a certain disease or whatnot. There are two outcomes. There is either death, or the innate immunity kicks in, or there's death. The innate immunity can then, um, it can cause, uh, the, the, disease, the disease can disappear, or the adaptive immunity has to kick in. Now the adaptive immunity, if it doesn't work, it can lead to death or it can uh, get rid of the disease, which will then create um, that specific memory of that disease. So now we have this, uh, the memory for that disease. And so when the second exposure comes, the innate immunity will kick in. and the disease might disappear already or it will it will activate the adaptive immunity with the memory and so with this memory it will definitely get rid of the disease so you'll be disease free and so this concludes the immunology overview um, there will be more videos to come for immunology which will cover it in much greater detail this was just a brief overview so please watch more.